you've got a wrestling background as well, uh, I believe, and combat experience um, in, in the off-season, like for, let's say, someone that's already pretty good with running and that's their strength and, and they've been identified, maybe they've, they need to get uh, more aggressive or they need to get better in their, their inside game. Uh, would you say wrestling would be the way to go? Is it boxing? What would be some of your favourite off-season sort of yeah, training? Yeah, so my, my background in... In wrestling, it's pretty limited. Like I, t- I took up jujitsu and then and then no gear wrestling, just just so I could learn if it, if it had a potential to um, apply to rugby at the time. Yep. So there's two two parts to that question. Um, I think absolutely yes, because if if say you're a, you're a young developing player and the physical part is one that you're either lacking confidence or lacking physicality. Mm-hmm. So the first part mentally going and doing a little bit of no gear wrestling. I would say that if you did gi wrestling, so jiu-jitsu with a gi, mm-hmm. and you were hoping that's going it, to, it can be quite slow and static. For the developing athletes listening in, um, like from a running skills point of view, you, you mentioned that early on and how important that yeah. is for teams, team sport athletes. What, what are I, some I, great, great drills? Yeah, first one for me is developmental athletes. If you're an AFL or a running sport, it doesn't matter whether you're, you're, you're naturally quick or naturally slow, maximise your running skills. And that's inclusive of skill, running skills and running capacity and running so capacity in terms of acceleration speed and and your anaerobic aerobic capacity. I think, you know, I think now we're so robotic with a lot of our training, we forget to play. And I think a lot of play in that agility space is a really big part of development. You know, mm-hmm. run at the goalpost, spin around it and see if you can hold your balance and having a bit of play, I think, in that multi-directional speed and agility. And then if you have access to someone who can really coach that stuff. What are some of your uh, favourite ways to, to get that message across? So for me, I, I don't like, I, I think as SC, some of us fall into the trap of having really long introduction talks too, too long on the presentations. And I, and I, you know, you think of how many times our athletes are being spoken to for long periods of time. So for my actual sessions, I, I like to start with an ignition game, it might be a rock, scissors, paper, face slap, or diff- I like to actually start the session with energy. So I capture your attention, wake you up. I don't have many rules when I run my sessions in the gym in particular. I don't have any rules apart from if you yawn. If you yawn in my session, then all the boys congregate together and you've either got to tell a joke and make them laugh or you've got to perform a dance. Because I, I believe yeah. en- energy, energy in the room and everyone being invigorated and alive, that's the key thing that has to precede meaningful information. We'll move into the, the France Bosch uh, methodologies now. What, 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 with the history side of things, what are some of the good and, and bad points to use when it comes to France Bosch work? Yeah, I think it's, um, I know it's very controversial. And um, for me, it was simple. I, I, was, I was in Japan and, and I was pretty comfortable at head of performance for the Japan national rugby team. And we developed great running capacity we developed um we had you know, very small guys so we slowly developed you know uh, lean muscle mass and all those things eddie jones is a, is a great coach and had a really particular plan for how he wanted to move out move the ball and move the players and that required a really high degree of vertical and lateral agility um and i hadn't really been in the agility space that much um mm-hmm. so I, I just need to seek someone who i felt had the expertise that I was seeking. So that was probably 2012 or 13. And I, I sought trans out, brought into Japan for a two week trial. Um, it, it was as confusing to me as it is to a lot of your listeners when, when you look at it and think, what the hell's that, mm. you know? Um, but I, I, what I did is rather than trying, you know, being a program director at the time, I could have said, you, you can do this. And then I just got, I gave him chunks of time and I just let him do whatever he wanted. And I just sat back and observed and, um, you know, I did notice that at the end of the two weeks, some of the guys, like I know everyone's max velocity, their max axel, I know all their data from GPS and, and also visually, I'm a, I've got a good eye, I guess. I'm a close observer of how people move. And I saw, yeah. cha- I saw changes in that two-week window, not with everyone, and it wasn't, I'm not going to tell you it was anything crazy, but I saw some shifts in peak axels for players I knew very well. So my attachment to it wasn't, that I was a Franz Bosch fanboy or, or anything like that. It was that I, I saw results that I hadn't been able to get before. For someone that's doing quite well, so they're, they're, doing, they're performing well in their role as, as the generalist, yep. but they're starting to get to that point now where they want to have those one to two areas that they're, they're really good at. Um, what would be some of your, 
methods to, to work that out and stand out in the industry. Genuine commitment and going outside the box. So, you know, one of my subordinate or junior staff didn't have any skills in the contact tackle kind of area, went away and did wrestling, came back and all of a sudden it's got these skill set. Genuine, authentic commitment and going outside our, our circle to get that expertise. That's pretty impressive, mm. you know, and that'll, that'll catch the attention of people. I think the other thing is, um, you know, we're in the business of influence. So you may well understand your content that you're trying to convey to players, but how good are your skills of summing it up in a, in a brief, articulate fashion? And then do you really know that the players digested and ingested what you said? 